Thanks for listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos and the PCC Multiverse. Check out more great podcasts today on one of these awesome affiliate networks. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. The Tangibound Network. Check it out. Tangiboundnetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. A proud member of the Gunna Geek Network. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other geeky podcasts over at GunnaGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in 3, 2, 1. On this week's program, will John Wick shoot down the Avengers? Is Bethesda's latest game all the rage? And is Twilight in the air with the latest Batman? All this and more as we reach our next stop, the PCC Multiverse. Don't be alarmed. The quasi-shimmering light before you is a trans-dimensional gateway to other worlds, other voices, other thoughts, and other realities. Up feels like down, and down feels like the number seven on a Wednesday morning. Don't worry. That quivering, blood-boiling sensation under your eyebrows is all a part of the charm. Welcome to the PCC Multiverse. And we're back with another episode of the PCC Multiverse. My name is Gerald Glassford from Pop Culture Cosmos and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great programs. Well, it wouldn't be a PCC Multiverse without my good friend, normally Mr. Josh Peterson, but asking him to sing a cappella right now wouldn't be a great option with his voice the way it sounded. So I got myself someone coming in from out of the bullpen, truly one of the most awesome guys that I know. He is one half of Stereo Monroy. Does that make it like Mono Monroy? Oh. You got to watch everything that he's up to on his Twitch channel, Dark Tales. It is my good friend. It is Mr. Tony Monroy. Appreciate Hi. you coming in at the last second, my friend. It's all good. Glad to be here. All right. It's just great to have you here. And I will give you plenty of time on the back end of the show to go ahead and tell everybody and shoot everybody a message exactly how they can go ahead and follow you on all your great platforms as well. Awesome. Well, we do have a great episode. Tony and I are going to be talking about John Wick, a little bit of Avengers, talking about a new Batman, PlayStation, Xbox, finally coming together on something. Also as well, some Rage 2, all that good stuff. But also on the back end of the show, we will have a segment of the latest episode of Topic Ocalypse. That is going to cover some of the great games of this latest generation, in their opinion. The guys are going to sit down for a round table on that, so you can't miss that. That's coming up on the back half of the show. But for now, let's start off with the big news. That is John Wick 3 Parabellum. That is hitting theaters this weekend. A lot of expectations for it because... There weren't a lot of expectations for these movies before with John Wick and John Wick 2. They've actually transitioned themselves from the first John Wick being a cult hit that people got to catch on video and and really got to go ahead and get into it. It has now become, with John Wick 3, there's now expectations on it to go ahead and succeed, be number one at the box office, to overtake Avengers Endgame, and actually provide a lot of people out there a thrilling I don't want to say conclusion because there possibly could be allusions toward a fourth John Wick movie, but at least a closure on this part of the trilogy when it comes to John Wick. And a lot of people are talking about how this movie, which has really performed well with critics as it comes out this weekend, that it could be one of the best trilogies out there in quite some time. Tony, I know you haven't had a chance to really get into John Wick all that much, but When it comes to John Wick and a lot of the action that goes on in the series so far, what are the things that you you like to see when it comes to an action movie and how that relates to what goes on in John Wick? I do know it has, it's a good action movie and I've seen bits and pieces of it. And I like the action scenes because I like I've seen like compilations and things like that. And of course, everyone knows about, you know, the the dog (laughs) that led to (laughs) some stuff. I like action movies, 
And I think this is something that I, I could definitely get into, especially with the third one now. And it seems to be performing well. So I think that might just push me over to the edge to sit down, watch the first two, and then uh, watch this third one. Because the first two have also been very well thought of, very strong as far as the ratings are concerned. And a lot of people are speaking very highly of this trilogy, almost in the same context as far as one of the best trilogies this century in relation to possibly the Lord of the Rings trilogy and some others that have been out there that have really provided a lot of great entertainment. But when you're mixed in with the Lord of the Rings and we're mixed in with several other high performing trilogies that have occurred over the course of the past almost 20 years now in this century, that's some good company to keep. And there was no expectations. I'm going to tell you right now when John Wick came out, I, like many other people, did not catch it in the theaters. But it still made a little bit of chunk of change because the production costs were so low on it. It still made a nice little chunk of change of the theaters, but it really started to take off once it hit streaming services and home video to the point where it necessitated a John Wick 2. And that just raised the stakes even higher while still managing to go ahead and be budgetary in their costs. This formula has worked twice so far. And I really see it working even more this time when it comes to John Wick 3. So right now we've got John Wick 3 at the box office. It looks like it's going to go ahead and be the number one movie this weekend, beating out Avengers Endgame. Your thoughts on Avengers Endgame finally, unfortunately, meeting its demise as far as its number one slot being toppled off. It held off Detective Pikachu for as best as it could but it looks like it's not going to be able to hold off the bang, bang, the boom, boom that John Wick provides. Yeah. I, you know, I saw that coming. It's been what three weeks now since the movie's been out a little over three weeks. So I think it's, it's just about time, even for a movie as good as Endgame is everyone who wanted to see it has pretty much seen it by now. So I expected that drop off. Like you said, detective Pikachu, did its work at trying to get it off. And I I do think John Wick 3 is going to take it down just because there's that following from the first two films now. And it's already gotten good reviews. So people are going to go see it. And it's definitely going to beat out a movie that's been out for a few weeks now. It has that correlation to me as far as the same thing with Avengers Endgame. A lot of people are going to go in and seeing a John Wick film for the first time Mm -hmm. when they go ahead and check out John Wick 3. And they may be a little bit lost on where everything is at. I don't think as much so as Avengers Endgame. I think Avengers Endgame, if you go into it without having any knowledge of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're really in trouble. But That's for sure. Yes, yes. So, you know, with John Wick 3, I mean, you can get a little bit of the backstory and I think you'll be okay. Like you said, if you know that this started over a dog and that he's an assassin deluxe, I think you pretty much got that down. But still... Kind of helps you if you see at least one of the first two that really gets you motivated, gets you going. But this truly is a very artistic work from what I'm seeing. And it looks like it's something that a lot of people are really going to get interested in as it hits theaters. And I think it's well-deserved. This trilogy, this series, this John Wick character is finally going to get the love on a major scale that I think it deserves after one and two came out to good reviews and good sales and good word of mouth. It is now becoming a trilogy people are looking out for. So look out for this weekend. It is John Wick 3 Parabellum. It is most likely, in at least as far as domestic returns are going to happen, it is most likely going to topple the Avengers Endgame for number one at the domestic box office. I got to ask you one last thing, my friend. I'm on the no side when it comes to it beating avatar for the worldwide take i hope i'm wrong and i sincerely hope i'm wrong but it is still 250 million dollars away from beating avatar at this point in time and with last week's returns worldwide at 160 million dollars the mathematics at this point don't add up i think it still has a chance it's gonna be a a fight because i was looking at things for other movies and even like infinity war and how much money they were pulling in even a few months after i think if it can make a little bit more more money in in this amount of time i think it it just might but maybe barely if if at all unfortunately well the Um, thing is it's going to lose about half every weekend from this point forward 
it's when it reaches around $10 million for a weekend at domestic box office, if it can hang around there for at least two, three, four weekends, if it can hang around there and the same thing worldwide, that might bode well for Avengers Endgame, but I'm not sure. I'm not counting on it because it's not having the legs that Avatar did, or even domestically, it's not having the legs that Star Wars The Force Awakens did here in the U.S. And so it at least, at least has to be number one worldwide or number one here in the U.S. So if it's not either, then it really isn't going to break either of those records, and it's not going to go ahead and catch up to Avatar, which is kind of a bummer. But for me, I'm hoping that I'm going to be wrong. But at this point, doing another quarter of a billion dollars is kind of a tough thing to ask. Avengers Endgame should make maybe 50 to 60 million of that this weekend. So that would leave it just right around 200 million to do. Oh, that's just yeah, that's a tough thing to ask. It'll be it'll be tough. Yeah, definitely. It, it'll be tough indeed. It is John Wick and the Avengers Endgame still battling out at the box office this weekend. If you're interested in going seeing John Wick 3 Parabellum, share us your thoughts on how you liked the movie, if you did, if you didn't, on popculturecosmos at yahoo.com, also as well, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanity Media, and Game Source on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. Don't touch that dial. Wait, do, do people still use dials? Looking for an edge the next time you take on your favorite video game? Then check out Vitabrace High Performance Gamer Wristbands. Packed with the power of fruit seed oil, Vitabrace is clinically proven to help improve performance, giving you a better gaming experience. Head to MiracleFruitOil.com and use the promo code MEDIA10 to get $10 off your Vitabrace purchase. Whether you're looking to beat the time on your latest speedrun, or are fighting your way to the top on your favorite multiplayer or battle royale, Vitabrace can help you reach your gaming goals. Buy Vitabrace today at MiracleFruitOil.com. That's MiracleFruitOil.com. Vitabrace. Win with it. Well, my friend, going on rapid fire because we're going to be talking about some great subjects here that are going on right now in pop culture. Rage 2 came out this week. We were trying to see if I could sit down with Josh to talk about it, but unfortunately he fell ill, and now he's really not sounding good at this point. So I'm hoping he'll come back for us on Sunday to talk some Game of Thrones. But right now, Rage 2, the latest entry from Bethesda, out on the marketplace for video games. Your thoughts on Rage 2? It has gotten okay reviews for the most part. has a lot of gunplay and gun style in its favor that's been the most lauded about because it it really resembles doom in that retrospect and for that it really is getting a lot of acclaim so your thoughts on rage 2 is it something that you're you're interested in or an open world game that is mainly still a first person shooter first and foremost is that something you're really interested in getting into at this point in time honestly i think so I liked the idea of the first Rage when I, because I played it very little since it was uh, quite a while ago now. 2011 is when it came out. Yes, so. yes, uh, that came out a while ago. I remember it coming out. It had a strong initial entry because it really had a great marketing campaign. But as soon as people really saw what for what it is, it was just a lot of window dressing and a lot of and not much there behind it. Yeah, yeah very shallow people dropped it like a bad habit and just <laughs> disappeared. So yeah. yeah. And this could be the same thing this time around as well, but I wanted to hear your thoughts because the gunplay is pattern after doom. And that really might make it more attractive to people out for buying. It's not necessarily original, but at the same time, I think it's something that works. It's going to attract a lot of people into it because it's, you know, it's a modern take on that open world. I think that's, Really cool. I like the colors that are in this game. The engine that they used for making this whole thing has looked to be really cool. So I think they have something going for them there. I've heard mostly, I guess, positive reviews for it. I haven't actually seen anything really negative about it. So that's a good thing, especially when you're comparing it to something like Fallout 76 or uh, Days Gone recently. Uh, I think even a game being better than a little bit better than average right now is a good thing because it seems we've had some duds recently. This is true. And you mentioned Fallout 76. 
the previous offering from Bethesda that mm-hmm. unfortunately their attempt into a multiplayer platform for the Fallout series fell really hard. A yeah. lot of bad reviews, sales nowhere near expectations, a lot of egg on Bethesda's face when it comes to the actual performance of the game itself. Very disappointing indeed. And this comes to question now with Rage 2 not getting the greatest reviews, but still solid enough to be something that with some love and some support from Bethesda, something that maybe a lot of people might end up enjoying. I want to ask you this. When it comes to the stuff that Bethesda is putting out there, they seem to be at this point in time with all the other titles that they've put out. Still, the only thing that they can actually get across on a – on a mass basis, seems to emanate from three properties, Doom, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout. So with that in mind, what are your thoughts on Rage Props possibly even breaking through and becoming another reliable pillar for them to lean on and have a Rage 3 down the road in, let's say, three years and Rage 4 and whatnot? Do you see that happening, or do you see this game actually maybe not being the type of game that they can go ahead and stand behind for generations to come because of the fact that it just doesn't perform very well. Or gamers interested in Bethesda products only seem to lean into Doom, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout. I feel like they could make this into another staple of their lineup. It just, like everything else, it's going to depend on the numbers. You know, if enough people want it, give it to them, you know? And I think that might be a, a good thing for them to do. I hope it does, because I like, like I said, I like the idea of Rage. When I saw the trailer for Rage 2, I was, I actually thought Borderlands at first. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then I've been intrigued. I think it's going to be just a little bit more to get a lot more uh, average people to get into it, try it out, play it, to see what they might do. I hope for Bethesda's sake that it can become something better. You know, not just a game that they put out and then they just kind of leave the whole Rage series behind again type thing. And then just move on to Elder Scrolls 6 and then, you know, whatever's next for Fallout. So I think there's hope. But you mentioned briefly about it having similarities to other games such as Borderlands 3 coming up later this year in September. Mm -hmm. It also kind of resembles other platform gaming that's around already as far as a free-to-play format or other formats such as apex legends it also though it doesn't do a third person over the shoulder like fortnite it still has that open type environment like fortnite and then also as well you could include PUBG as far as in that mix do you see it actually having any kind of legs that would get people excited to play it over and over and over or is it something in the world of Fortnite and PUBG and Apex Legends that's going to be, I don't know, just forgotten about by the time, like you said, Borderlands 3 comes around? I feel like it's it's not a good thing to com- to, like, to compare those types of games because you have, uh, you're talking about PUBG, Fortnite, Apex, things like that. Well, they're shooters, yeah, they're, but this is not a, this isn't a multiplayer game in, in a sense. Uh, like, it, it's single player oriented so comparing it to a battle royale game where you have a bunch of people it's kind of weird but i i know that's that, that's a thing right now the thing right now is multiplayer and currently battle royale so it might hold its own and i think it will because of the people that have wanted more single player experiences you know i think that's something that i've wanted you know sometimes i just feel like going and doing something myself and having these goals with something like Fortnite or PUBG, I feel I don't ever go forward in that game. It's always, it's so match by match oriented, even with things like challenges. I mean, you get them done and then you get a cosmetic or something. I feel like that's not as satisfying as going through a game, especially if they can improve on it well, whether it be future DLC or whatever like that. And I agree with you on that because this game has to be supported by Bethesda with more DLC. So, you know, and I think a lot of it has to be free in order to entice people to go ahead and continue playing it mm-hmm. or to see it as a value. Because if they try to go ahead and tack on more expensive DLC, like so many other games out there, 
that's going to be hard for it to ask to be, you know to keep gamers attention oh i got to pay another 15 20 30 40 bucks extra on top of the 60 bucks i just spent whereas i could just go play literally for free on apex legends or fortnite so that doesn't make any sense to a lot of people out there unless a dlc a is compelling sold or given away at a great price so i think it's up to bethesda to go ahead and try and enrich that game with a lot of bonus content that might make that world a little bit more detailed a little bit more full of life because i know that's probably one of the main complaints is that the world itself is not lively enough to go ahead and really just give that player the continual fix of trying to go out and and go on mission after mission after mission without just becoming repetitive gunplay here and gunplay there. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see what Bethesda provides as far as DLC down the road. What are your thoughts out there on Rage 2? Are you playing it now or is it something you want to go ahead and get involved with as far as your next gaming fix? Do you think it's going to be something that's going to be one of the memorable properties that Bethesda owns like Doom, Elder Scrolls, and Fallout? Share us your thoughts, popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. Also as well, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanity Media, and Game Source on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Gotta ask you, my friend, did you hear the news about PlayStation and Xbox? All of a sudden, after so many years of going at each other and hearing all the stuff about how they won't work with each other, cross-play, they cannot do, yada, 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 this, yada, yada, da, 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 da. They're now finally coming together to possibly work on a cloud gaming platform that will be competitive with what's been introduced into the world out there by Google Stadia that's coming at a later point in time, but it's already been introduced. It's already had demonstrations. It's already been a a big part already of what people are talking about for the future of gaming. Your thoughts on PlayStation and Xbox finally coming together on something, and is it out of necessity? Is it out of a general goodwill, or is it something that you see as a long time coming that needed to happen a lot sooner? I did notice that they decided to partner up for this, and I think that's interesting. Definitely caught me off guard because I didn't expect <laughs> I didn't expect to hear about this, but it makes sense because I think the idea of the console wars and these com- the the companies going against each other isn't a big present going into the next gen consoles like it will be but i think it's going to be put on the back burner it's not going to be the whole focus of what they want to do i think what they've noticed like a lot of other people is where the trend in gaming is going and i think that's streaming games cloud-based games obviously so i think it's it's good on them to work together especially because you know, Sony's kind of had this weird thing with not wanting to work with people a lot. And Microsoft has been getting a lot better about that, especially over the past like couple of years. They've been getting a lot more lenient with with crossplay and then working with Nintendo recently. And now with this, I think that's a it's a big step to show what these companies can do working together rather than at each other's throats. I agree with you. It is a great time to be a gamer because you now have, for the first time, PlayStation, Xbox starting to really work together on something. And Xbox has already reached out to Nintendo, started working with Nintendo about putting Xbox Live on their platforms, getting together with Nintendo on crossplay. They've actually, being number three, been proactive in trying to reach out to the other two parties to see if they could get something going because they wanted to obviously be very favorable in the eyes of gamers so that they could be more attractive and obviously people will go ahead and buy xbox products etc etc but it is a great time for them to go ahead and come together on something jumping in a little bit late but still jumping into it because google stadia is not yet out officially into the wild to the point where, you know, there's still a lot of time to go ahead and develop something together with PlayStation Xbox. I don't think it'll be coming for the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, but for the next generation of game consoles or the next generation of gaming, it could be something that a lot of gamers wouldn't want to pass up. Yeah, and I think that's why it makes sense to do it now. It wouldn't have made sense to do it mid-life cycle of 
the current consoles because that just kind of I, I think that would feel weird and then obviously you're working with that hardware limitation i guess in a sense i think it's good that they're doing this before these next consoles have even been technically announced because that that gives them the opportunity to you know surprise us with with something because if we already knew about the next xbox or playstation more than we do now i feel like it'd be a little weird to hear about this because maybe it wouldn't be till like the next gen after this one coming up but i think because they kind of kept a lot of things hush hush announcing it now will make people more excited for what's to come let's hope so because it at least shows that they're working together out of necessity mind you but they're still at least working together to go ahead and try and make gaming better for a lot of gamers out there like you and I, so right. that the future looks more attractive for gaming and that it just won't be based off of what we see from Google Stadia. And that'll be the end thing. And everybody will drop the others like a bad habit. So it would be great if Nintendo gets involved with this somehow. I would hope that that's the case because they need to get into any type of technological advancement that they can. It's yeah. great that they go ahead and have the Nintendo Switch out there that's doing so good, so well with the numbers. But for them, online platforms and any type of streaming or anything of that nature has something that they have not been able to catch up to 100% when compared to PlayStation and Xbox. So I'm hoping that Nintendo will also jump on board and see the light and realize that this is something that needs to be done in order to go ahead and be competitive against a Google Stadia. Yeah, I think that they, they definitely need to jump on board with this because by the time this stuff all comes out and it's if Nintendo just has the Switch as it is, I think it would just have a big drop off because... Even if they are working, if they will work with uh, the Xbox Live service, I don't think that'd be enough to put themselves in in a healthy position. Because when these next consoles come out, and then eventually Stadia, it doesn't even have the, what it takes now to take on these consoles. So how is it going to fare with the new ones? Especially if they get that big advancement of the streaming service. You know, I don't think the Switch could handle that right now. No, but if you have a streaming service that can go ahead and support maybe the Switch mm -hmm. or what the Switch, maybe the model that they've talked about upgrading to, because we've heard rumors for now that there's going to be a cheaper Switch and a more expensive, more powerful Nintendo Switch, maybe that could support some type of cloud gaming platform. Yeah, I think that would be the case. Because obviously cloud gaming is supposed to take the uh, a lean off of the uh, the hardware side of things, at least from what I understand. I didn't know if like the Switch would be able to have the internals, at least besides the what's driving the power to handle the the streaming. You know, whatever that may be. I guess when it comes to internet accessibility, things like that. Absolutely, I'm hoping that they can come up with something that will be able to for Nintendo fans out there be able to go ahead and keep them up to date with all their Nintendo games that is based off in the cloud because it looks like that's where it's trending, at least off the early returns from Google Stadia. You know, there's going to be people like, I'm going to say Josh. Josh always loves his console, so it's going to be hard for to wean him off of the console. I know it's going to be hard to wean me off of the console gaming type deal because that's something I've been used to pretty much since 1980 to give you an idea of my deal so well you know pong the pong right there and then you went into the Atari <laughs> 2600 and all that so th that tells you how old i am that tells you how focused and fixated i am on console gaming but i still have an open enough mind to see if cloud gaming does work without a lag without any type of distortion that can stream 1080p to my television and me play fully without any type of lag or notice at all, then count me in. Count me in without a hitch on that, but you're still at the mercy of whatever internet that you have, no matter how good the platform is set up on the other end. So you're, there has to be some limitations that they give out like Google Stadia did initially upon its information getting out there, they did say, okay, you'd need this much of an internet to go ahead and be able to have it processed correctly. 
So I'm assuming the same thing would come out for PlayStation and Xbox. But yes, it is Nintendo's best interest to figure out a way to go ahead and join in on this because doing their own cloud gaming platform, I wouldn't advise it seeing how online capabilities has not been their forte so far. I don't see that changing anytime soon. And I see a smart move by them not being left out is getting in with PlayStation Xbox and hopefully between two of those three entities or all of those entities coming together on a cloud gaming platform that we as gamers can be proud of. What are your thoughts out there on a PlayStation Xbox merger in the cloud gaming marketplace? Share us your thoughts, popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. Also as well, Pop Culture Cosmos, Humanity Media, and Game Source on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. Well, coming up next, we've got the guys from Topic Topicocalypse. They're coming right back here after the break with their thoughts on the best games of this generation. And then right after that, Tony and I are going to be talking about the next Batman. We'll talk about who actually is going to play the Batman coming up later in the show. This is the PCC Multiverse. Get ready for Box Art, a gaming docuseries from Pyre Productions and Rob McCallum Films. If you love video games, chances are there's a box cover or cover image that you love and has stuck with you for decades. In our series, Box Art, we travel across North America to visit with the unknown illustrators and artists responsible for creating the most iconic gaming images of all time. What was once scheduled to be a 90-minute documentary is now a six-episode season packed with unbelievable tales that paint a picture of the gaming industry you've never imagined. Just one of the many pop culture projects from Rob McCallum, Empire Productions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Topic Topicocalypse, the only podcast on the internet. I am your revered or reviled host, Josh Peterson, joined here by Big Dog. What's up, what's up? And our resident meme lord, Brett Cruz. When in doubt, Jesus and tacos. Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys, so we're all, we're, we're pretty big gamers here, right? We, we, lo- we like the game. World's most casual gamer. World's Hell most yeah. casual gamer, that's right. So... You guys are aware how long we've been in this this generation of consoles? About seven years. God, has it been that long? It's been a while. We yeah. got uh, we got the Xbox One on opening day. Me and Big Dog waited outside <laughs> Target. Oh, pointless. We got there like four. Oh my god. And we <laughs> we waited in the parking lot just to see like when people were lining up. So we could beat the dozen people that were in line. Store with us. <laughs> store opened at eight. People didn't start lining up till seven thirty. So that was we a, were there at four. It was a huge waste of time. We were there at four. Huge waste of time. But were you guys number one? We got the Xbox. No, because I refused to get out of the I'm like, there's not enough people to get out of the car. <laughs> and we still got the They're X- like they have at least twenty. We're good. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. we still got the Xboxes though, so that was good. Yeah. But there's rumors going around E3's coming up, right? Microsoft may or may not mm-hmm. announce their new console. Place the specs for the PlayStation 5 have already leaked online. So we're we're well into this. The The developers have already got their dev kits for whatever's next on Xbox or PlayStation. So it's inevitable, right? We're getting those announcements. 2020, they're gonna, we're going to see those, those boxes come out. Maybe, maybe holiday 2019. We don't know. That would be a stretch. I think 2020 will be the earliest we see them. But knowing this, what do you guys think? Because this generation of consoles is ending. What games do you guys think defined this generation of consoles? In God, of, God of War. God God of War for sure. God of War, the Cory Barlog showed that you can take a character that's a one dimensional and flat like Kratos with, with good writing and the awesome voice acting of Christopher Judge. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the soundtrack by Bear McCreary yes. was really good too. They're pretty good. The um yeah, because like I was telling you guys before we start recording, I have been going back and playing the old ones and they are hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. I mean, they're fun. It's it's a mindless game, just hack and slash, yeah. puzzle solving. But it it's really there's nothing that lets you latch on to Kratos as a character. It's a more adult Zelda game, right? Right. But I mean, it's it's linear too. So yes. unlike Zelda, where you can actually walk around and do and like explore a world, kinda. This Kra- uh, God of War kind of ho- yeah. always held your hand. But in this new one, it's it's kind of open world. Like you can ex- choose where you want to go and explore things like they kinda, that. They kind of they took they took a one dimensional hack and slash and made it into kind of an RPG. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fantastic, brilliant move. Right. I would say shoot. I got I got Gears of War four. I would say Kingdom Hearts. 
You think so? Kingdom Hearts 3? Not 3, 2. Because it was in the middle of the cycle. Because PlayStation, or PlayStation 4 came out 2013. And Xbox was right around that same time. Right. So for five, almost, well, six years now, 2013, 2014, Kingdom Hearts, I think, is... The 2.8 remix or whatever it yeah. was? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because everyone loved one when it was on the PS2 or PS3. Mm-hmm. And then they re- they came out with two, and then they remastered it to include in, in the bundle series. I think that's that's one of the, the top ones, I think, for... What what is it about it? Because from what I understand, like I I bought the story so far, it's up there. I haven't played it yet. But Kingdom Hearts is a game that hasn't really adapted. That's what all the reviews I've read about Kingdom Hearts three have said. That hey, it's cool. We got an ending, and that's fun. It's fun to go to those Disney worlds and stuff. But it's like the the gameplay hasn't adapted. The story hasn't really adapted. It's just kind of been the same thing ever since the the first one came out. Yeah, I would agree that it, it hasn't adapted a whole ton, but I feel like story wise, people are invested in it. Almost like along the lines of like the Mass Effect following. Oh, where geez. where people oh. are people are so invested in that world yeah, and in that story. A top franchise. And then, well, unfortunately, Andromeda was a big I, I wanna flop. hit I, 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 I want to I want to hit that in a minute. Okay, I, yeah, I do. I, yeah, me too. But I think there there are certain franchises that had iterations that came out on the Xbox and on the PlayStation 4 that were continuations from the previous console generations that... We're talking about like original content for the series? Because uh, I'll go with uh, Josh's favorite, Hellblade. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It's good, dude. And that, <laughs> yeah. the uh, the motion track artist, yes. I know I've said she's hot, but no, she has like made a living off of that, though. No, like, she's like a legit actress. She, like, yeah, she's super and good. Ninja Theory actually have, they have her on retainer. So, like, she doesn't really do work for anyone else but them. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do want to hit Andromeda, though, for a second. As much as it was panned, I think that that was a pivotal game for this generation of consoles because what it did was. It created this model of what well, showed that you can't just release something with right and then right it's, yeah right it was kind of like it, a it showed, kind of like a gut check it showed EA EA sucks but it also created this this business model where people were seeing what was going on with this and how they were fixing things as they went mm-hmm. and people were were adapting that business model going hey this is one of those we can keep getting money from we people. Get, yeah well, so okay, people so, are adding on to the story as they go so it's the same thing with Anthem right like you had. Yep. The the people who have is that, EA, is that out yet? It's out. No, it's out. It's, oh, is it? Uh, it's twenty bucks right now on sale. It was, I was released. Just gonna, I was, it was, I was rele- just going to ask how well is how good so, is it? So right now the current date is April seventeenth, twenty nineteen. It was released in f- late February of the same it's year. Already twenty bucks. and it's already twenty bucks. Right. And I kind of texted you guys about this as far as Anthem. Anthem was was being hyped up to be like this. It's supposed to, it was supposed to get Bioware back on track. Yeah, it was going to be this the next thing. It was it was hyped up. A bunch of people were uh-huh. like, "Oh, this is going to be awesome," based on what they had heard, based on rumors, based on Bioware's reputation. And right now, if you hold like live streaming service viewership in any kind of light, which I think that is it's some important. metric, it's important because if people are not watching and engaging with streamers and content creators who are putting out this content with this certain game flight simulator has more people watching than anthem currently on twitch which is insane for a game that is less than six months old it's weird because ea is the one that messed up mass effect but then they're they're the ones also messing up anthem because they're doing that what what's the if you have you pay like 170 dollars a month or something, right? For EA, excuse me, EA Access. It's not a month. I think it's a year. There, there's like EA Premier, Premier Access. So you get access to all of the EA games for like a monthly price or something. So it's like a that. Game Pass for EA only, kind of. No, but there's different tiers of it. If you pay at the highest tier, you get to play these games like two weeks before they come out. Mm-hmm. But they're basically using people who have that access as the beta testers. Yep. And that's money what, grab. That's what they did. And, but that's yep. that's messed up though, because if you're paying that Dude, much money known, for something, we've known EA's been right, up, though, right. But it's 
in their mess ups, they're creating market trends with well, other developers that well, aren't necessarily positive. Well, it's crazy that you know EA is now they've they've gone they've screwed the Battlefront. Mm-hmm. They've now screwed the Mass Effect franchise. Yep. They've screwed the pooch with Anthem. Dragon Age is next. Dra- man. Oh, please don't! I've, they that's barely my, that's like my last, skated uh, by with the last Dragon Age. Though. Oh, dude, that was a good there, game. Oh. If you're reading Jason Schreier's article, there's like seven other scrap Dragon Age mm-hmm. projects too. Yeah. I Which actually enjoyed insane. that game. He in in Blood Sweat they and Pixels, that off. he talks huh? about they pulled that off. Yeah, they did. The last it, yeah, one, like by good. the skin of their teeth. If you read uh, Blood Sweat and Pixels, he talks about Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah, he was barely barely made that one. Okay, so what what do you guys think about the Master Chief Collection though? As far as a package of remastered games goes, like that was pretty solid. That. it had its issues at first, but they they were able to fix them. I think you have uh, a lot of people of nostalgia. Yeah. And in going, oh, like I remember playing this, like however many. Well, for me, it was like middle school, high school. Yeah, but dude, the, but these like, games, you go back and play them now. Like Brian came, we, we recently played Borderlands two, and Josh and I've been playing uh, Halo one. We, we played Halo one, dude. That still holds up. That is it does. It, it was the and challenging. Yeah, right. It was the anniversary one, but still, still. But yeah. like we went, like I said, uh, Brian and I were playing Borderlands two, and dude, he and I were barely skating by. It was mm-hmm. challenging and fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but I think that goes to show that the engine and the mechanics of the game don't only really matter as much as the as the writing and yeah. story and game. Well, I guess gameplay, yeah. yeah. Well, we're, yeah. We're like good. the gameplay and the graphics, because Borderlands has always been kind of a well, that's not what weird every, graphically. Isn't yeah. that what everybody t- that touts though? Isn't that what everybody hypes up is the graphics on all these games? Right. When, mm-hmm. when yeah, it could look real great, but it's, yeah. we're getting to the point though where. You can't really improve mechanics that much more, right? We're gonna we're storytelling is about to make a huge comeback. Fine, yeah, I, I hope think. so. I hope so. Okay, so what do you guys think about Fortnite, though? I can't stand it. I don't understand. But it. I mean, don't it? It's pretty influential as far as a free to play game goes. Because it was the first popular one to do it. Because PUBG, I think, was actually the first one to do but it. But when you look back on Xbox oh, One, first, like, PlayStation Four. Nintendo Switch, Fortnite, Def- Minecraft stand out pretty yeah. well. Yeah, and my opinion on that is kids and younger generations now are easily entertained and fickle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if they don't have to go to their parents well, and you, say, well, "Hey, I need sixty dollars for this game," like, "Oh, it's a free game." Oh, right. And they're like, "Oh, okay, cool." Or you can it, know what it is? Is it. it's like, "Hey, hey, mama, can I have like five dollars for this new skin?" Oh sure, 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 yeah, five bucks. That's, but that's like every other day. What's all the story? Yeah. All the stories you're yeah. seeing of kids who take their parents' credit card yeah. and spend like yeah, three hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the best Fortnite player, and I just want to let you know I got all the original skins <laughs> and everything. And so like I'm an OG, and I kill ninja like every. Well, single dude, day. that's like every. I remember when Call of Duty, everyone's like, "Yo, I got diamond guns." I'm like, "Oh, what does it do? Is it give you like extra power?" No, it's just got covered in diamonds. I'm like. Who cares? That means that I wasted my life and go- got this yeah. skin. The golden chainsaw gun yeah, gears. Who cares? You, you had to pre-order it to get it. Oh, you're cool. That yeah. guy. Whew. Yeah. And and I think Fortnite is significant. Well, and I it, wouldn't say it's for mindless. consoles. It's yeah. mindless. There's you, there's like very little effort goes into making those games. They, they took what is uber addictive in mobile games oh, yeah. and made it console. console. Right. And they made it competitive enough yeah. to where people are like shoot i i gotta be i gotta be number one or i want to get the top 10 because it, it's because okay i'll give fortnite this it but was it was it was innovative because there's no other shooter where you have to build at the same time yep. as trying to fight somebody oh I, I i respect the craft for sure it's a skill i've watched i'm like i don't even know how to do that but like like i was just i shared our video from the overcooked video like who thought that would, that game would be fun but it is obviously yeah. satisfying yeah and i get i get that people get that same but at kids these days like why do you play single player it's so boring i'm like oh my like, gosh cuz kids nobody nobody likes a story you know these kids it's it's all a uh, flash and it's all like dangling the shiny object is what this yeah. what these are i told my nephew got let's go pikachu right cuz he mm-hmm. wanted to play with me and i went over there i'm like all right let's play but he was not far enough into the game and he could not stay interested in it long enough to get far enough into it he couldn't even figure out how to play i'm like what's so complicated about it? you go around you go to the gyms you catch the pokemon and mm-hmm. that's how you play but he didn't get Too it because he them. he was go he was right back onto his ipad playing a game where you're just a truck running over other trucks yeah mhm <laughs> And, and I think part of it's like attention span. And I think, like, do you think ever in your in your life you'd ever play something called a goat simulator? <laughs> yeah, I never fun. did, that's, that's but I know I know what you're talking about. It's on X, it's on goat. Games Pass. If you guys ever get a chance, yeah. Well, 
I'm on, <laughs> I'm on PlayStation. So. Uh, okay, so I do want to ask you guys about Final Fantasy, though. Big Dog, you, you and I dabbled in, or I have played it, but we played the Comrades, right? Yeah. Uh, Brett, did you play or watch any footage of Final Fantasy 15? I, I did watch it. For me... <sighs> because it's it's a franchise that's been around since the 80s. Yeah, and it's it. I still cannot get into the story. No, but I mean, it sold enough copies to. to I understand it's a very yeah. vastly popular. You you have enjoyed it uh, the entire time I've known you. Right, so. right. But I mean, my fanboy aside, it they did a good job of taking something that was that old, just like they did with Breath of the Wild on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Did a good job taking something that has really old roots and making it so younger people can play it who have never played the other ones. Yeah, you know what you should do? New console. Should, should redo uh, the Oregon Trail. Ooh, dude, hyper that, realistic. Hyper realistic. That's oh. that's becoming survival Ooh. game. That's becoming a thing cool. again. They have little hand portable Oregon Trail games and T-shirts now. So you died of dysentery. No, no, no. But like, like it's just the same concept, but just way updated. Not just the same game on a, on yeah. like new console. I'm say, talking like like hyper like God of War, but it's the Oregon Trail. Jeez. Oh, no, I would say <laughs> as far as you get, you just got to get as far as you can. For the the end life of this current console generation, I think Red Dead Two. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is insane. Yeah. Um, so if you tell Rockstar, hey, use your Red Dead development yeah, and already, do it with already, Oregon Trail, you're already, you're set up. already oh in my the gosh, Western. Would that not be cool? A DLC. And, Here we go. Or a DLC. Or I mean, and you can make it like a you can make a single player, multiple branch butterfly effect type of thing. What if there's a mode where you could be either people in the caravan or you could be bandits raiding caravans? Mm. Yeah. That'd be fun. So you can play you different gotta, yeah, points Yeah, you can play opposite of that. defense. It'd be yeah. freaking cool. How do you feel? Or you can be a bear and maul everybody. Ooh, ooh. Well, could, but can you imagine trying to rob a mobile, like like trying to rob a train, really? Yeah. And and I think like you can get some of that Westworld kind oh, of thing into oh, it. Oh, sure. Like you can play however you want. You can be the people in the caravan that are just trying to make it to their plot of land that they're getting to. Kind of like or you a, can be like the bandits that's like, like I'm going to take everything like you, you see, got. Like you see all those uh, Skyrim videos, like alter, uh, alternate start, alternate life. Yeah. Where you're not yeah. the main character of the game. Oh, yeah, you're like yeah. some random dude in some yep. town. Yep. <laughs> you're like the random guard that just gets to take that all the time. <laughs> the, the one guy that does all the voices. Yeah. Yeah. What, okay, best remaster of this generation outside of Master Chief Collection. I want to say, for me, it's a tie between Resident Evil 2 and Spyro. Spyro was a pretty good looking. I would say Tomb Raider. Raider. Tomb Raider? That's, that's a remastered franchise, remastered game. Well, it's a rebooted game. Okay, well, it's still a pivotal game, I think. Yeah. I'd say probably Resident Evil 2. Because that. Me, it's because... completely unrecognizable from the original. Yeah. But real quick, real quick. I know we've played it a million times, but how excited were you when they said they're remastering Skyrim for Xbox One? That was, I was pretty I was excited. excited. I bought it on the Switch. And, and I played it, and I played probably, I think, one single-story playthrough, and then I was like, okay, it's the same thing. I, yeah. I, I got it. I loved <laughs> well, the they, idea they, they of playing they, it. They released I it on, time on the Xbox, time. and then they released it on the PS4, yeah. and then they released it on the Switch, and then they were like, remastered on the PC, and everyone was like, <laughs> wow! Every single time they put it on a different... People are well, so the, piece, about the PC it. is the biggest one because then the modders get a hold of yeah. it, and then it really becomes cool. Games. The the yeah. Switch one was so bad that I got to Markarth right, and I got a bunch of side quests. Went around, I, I had paid maybe twenty of them. Did all of them? Only registered completing three. Dude, because just, the NPCs kept dying. Dude, I don't know what. Yeah, I do. <laughs> sometimes the glitches were the best. Like, well, yeah. I couldn't finish on the Xbox 360. I couldn't finish Skyrim because the dragons killed one of the story NPCs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had to restart. <laughs> and indie games is an interesting territory because I think with the new consoles coming out, we're going to get to see stuff that we've never seen. I before. think that the indie games have the best ideas. It's just they don't have the back end to make the, the budget quality. right. And and I think that. That that's and I think if, what's needed. If the if, if the big industry yeah. was smart, that that's where they'd be pulling from. Mm-hmm. If they were smart. Well, whatever Ninja Theory is working on for the next gen is going to well, be yeah. good. Yeah. All right, cool guys. You got any closing thoughts? That's it. That's it. All right, cool. Well, if you guys have any thoughts about this, or you have any games you're excited for, things that we didn't cover, oh, send us. A- excited for a new Star Wars game for the new next gen, new console. Yep. New Star Wars game. Hopefully, we'll Hopefully. get something good. Yeah. Uh, if you have anything that we didn't cover that you think was uh, console or generation defining, send us an email at topicoclips at gmail.com. If not, you can find more on podbeanpodcast.com, Google Play, 
Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, all the usual places. We'd also love you can follow us, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Until next time, it's been a pleasure. You're listening to the Pop Culture Cosmos. If you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games, we can help. Retro City Games in Henderson, Nevada, only five minutes from the Las Vegas Strip, has all your favorite gaming staples, classics, and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves. Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. And we're back to close out the show. This is the PCC Multiverse. If you need a listing of where we're at, because we're being played all around the world, seven days a week on great radio stations, plus we're on over 30 different podcast options, check out our listings today on our Facebook page, Pop Culture Cosmos, where you'll also get the latest news and information on the realm of pop culture as well. Well, my friend, since Josh is not here to talk about the great things going on with Top Apocalypse, what's going on, my friend, with your great stuff going on with Twitter and also your awesome Twitch stream. So with all the stuff coming out, Rage 2 and things like that, I have my Twitch at twitch.tv slash darktales with two Zs. There's been some cool Hearthstone stuff coming out too, so I'm kind of digging into that. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. You can catch any updates on my Twitter. My Twitter handle is wwxecho. For anyone that wants to follow me, I'll, I post some pretty neat stuff. I try to get a good mix of personal you know i'm a real person and then you know my streaming and gaming stuff on the side too so yeah check me out that's wwx echo and also for us since i'm not a real person it is at pop culture cosmo i'm just kidding you, my friend just kidding you, just kidding you. <laughs> although you know i've been called that on more than one occasion in my lifetime but i won't go there <laughs> before we head on out my friend i gotta hear your thoughts because it was just well people were confirming it some entities were not confirming it. Some entities would say there were still discussions. I think we're just going to call at this point and say, you know what? It is going to happen. It is Mr. Robert Pattinson, you know, from Twilight. Oh, hold on. Listen, listen to me while I brood. Okay, I was brooding there just like him in Twilight. <laughs> My friend, what are your thoughts about him becoming the next Batman I know Ben Affleck was not considered really a a thought as far as once he dropped out of the running with writing the next Batman and directing the next Batman, once Matt Reeves came on as director and indicated he wanted a younger Batman, it looked like Ben Affleck would be out. He eventually did get kicked to the curb, and it looks like Robert Pattinson is now in. And what are your thoughts on him becoming the next Batman, playing a younger Bruce Wayne as he goes out and fights crime and fights evil and do, does all those Batman things. I think it's an interesting choice. It caught me by surprise because it's, I mean, besides Twilight, I haven't really, I, I haven't even watched a lot of the Twilight. Besides those movies, I haven't known him for anything else that was like big on a bigger scale. So I think it's, an interesting move they might have to tone down on the sparkles for batman (laughs) but i have some mixed thoughts on it so far i guess because i can't be mad at it because you know younger batman would be cool i I won't know until i get to to see him in that role whether it be a trailer or something like that or some sort of preview to to see what he'll look like because in my mind i can't picture it for some reason it would be hard to picture it. I agree with you until you see that, that first trailer with him in it. It is Robert Pattinson. Most likely he's most likely the one committing to the role of the Batman in the Batman film coming up from director Matt Reeves as they go into production here in a little while, but also consider it for the role and possibly still a contender, but most likely from, you know, the various outlets out there that it's not is Nicholas Holt who needs a job after X-Men Dark Phoenix because it looks like there's no more X-Men coming around. 
from the Fox style coming up as it gets rebooted at some point in time into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Your thoughts on if Robert Pattinson can be the next Batman, what are your thoughts and hopes on, on the actual next Batman movie as well? Because it's said to be a little bit more noirish, more dark in tone, and more like a detective story, like some of the original comics are concerned. They both look like they'd be good contenders for the, the younger Batman role that they're trying to achieve. They both have a fairly similar look. I think they could do movie magic to make Robert look a little more dark in terms of like facial hair and actual hair, I guess, like that. Cause yeah, because right now it's all blue. No! <laughs> that's an that's a X-Men joke in there for you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but I think it could work either way. As for what they're going for in terms of the movie like a lot of people i know don't like the dc movies as much as because of those darker tones that they seem to have which isn't always a bad thing but i think if they're trying to go with that detective sort of thing it might work they really need to pull it off they really do otherwise it's it's just not going to be good for them i don't know it's kind of tough to say because they did great with aquaman over a billion dollars at the box office Shazam, which to the critics, they kind of liked it. I didn't personally think the movie was that great. And unfortunately, not enough people saw it. So it did kind of do bad at the box office. It is by far and away the lowest performing movie in the DC extended universe. But they have hopes for the character possibly going forward. Maybe a Shazam 2. Maybe that'll get more excitement out of people. But at this point in time... They do need something that's going to hit well with audiences because the Joker movie, which is supposed to be a standalone movie, that comes out later this year. you got the Birds of Prey coming out next year, Wonder Woman coming out next year. And those movies all need to hit on a good note. And if the Batman comes back and that comes back out strong, you know what? We could get involved in Batman who could get interested in what he's doing and what he's all about like we did with Christian Bale and the Mm -hmm. Batman movies he was in. But we'll have to wait and see how that works out. Just at this point in time, it is most likely Robert Pattinson as the next Batman, unless we hear otherwise, but most of the trade outlets are saying that he is going to be the next Batman. So it'd be very interesting what happens in the future. Indeed, if this is only going to be a one-off, if there's going to be more appearances by Robert Pattinson or whoever ultimately gets the role of the Batman in the future and how that works out as part of the DC extended universe. What are your thoughts out there on Robert Pattinson becoming the next Batman? Share us your thoughts, popculturecosmos at yahoo.com. Well, I want to thank you, my friend, Mr. Tony Monroy for being on the show. Plus the awesome guys at Topic Eclipse for sharing their thoughts on the best games of this current generation. Before we head on out, my friend, I got to drop this one on you. On an AMA, Ask Me Anything, recently with Kevin Feige of Marvel, he recently dropped a bombshell that the Mandarin will return to the Marvel Cinematic Universe at some point down the line. Do you think he's a threatening enough villain to go ahead and do something even better than what he did or whatever the entity did of the Mandarin did in Iron Man 3? I think it's going to be a good thing especially because they got to start digging up some villains now. (laughs) You know, I know a lot of people were unsatisfied with the Mandarin's portrayal in Iron Man 3, the whole bombshell of, I guess, the big plot twist for the movie. So I think it'll be good if they can bring it out and then make the villain who he should be. I did read somewhere that it might be implemented in the new Shanghai movie. Is that... Shang-Chi. Oh, Shang-Chi. There we go. Yeah, that could be a possibility. It's cool that we got the bit of confirmation on it. You know, there is hopes for that in the future, which is always good because we're, we're kind of left in the dark about most of the future at, at the current moment. So it'll be interesting to see where they take it. It will be interesting to see where they take it if the Mandarin returns. It looks like he will return at some point in time down the road in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in some form. And you're right, Tony. If I was a betting man, which I am here in Vegas, it looks like I would probably make my first bet on the Shang-Chi movie coming up. And I'm hoping, like I said before, the Shang-Chi movie will be a tried and true, honest to goodness, really rock solid 
kung fu movie because we sure could use one. Double Dragon didn't do that well. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me started with Double Dragon. I know that's that's a joke between <laughs> you, your dad, and Josh, and I'm not sure I'm digging it. But hey, at least you got to see me in the credits. <laughs> And just giving you a heads up for what's coming up with us here at the Pop Culture Cosmos on our Sunday show, we have got a review right after we watch the final episode of the Game of Thrones. We will be sure to let you know our thoughts with everything on the last episode of the Game of Thrones. Plus, be on the lookout for upcoming episodes starting next week on the PCC Multiverse. We're going to have some E3 previews on PC gaming third-party games, Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. They're all going to be covered coming up in separate previews, starting with next week's PCC Multiverse. So for Tony Monroy, this is Gerald Glassford. It's another beautiful day in paradise right here in the PCC Multiverse. We thank you for listening. And here's hoping you have yourself a great We are the Metal Geeks Podcast, and on this show, we have heavy metal, comic books, video games, movies, theme parks, and more. Wait, wait, wait. Comics? Yep. And movies? Exactly. Video games? Yeah. Metal? Of course. How does theme parks fit in this? It just does. All of us Metal Geeks can be found at MetalGeeks.net. At Metal Geeks for Twitter. Metal Geeks on Instagram. And Metal Geeks on the Facey Space. You can also find us on iTunes. Subscribe today. Metal Geeks. You're listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Tangent Bound Network. Let your voice be heard. TangentBoundNetwork.com Thanks so much for downloading the Pop Culture Cosmos and stay tuned as more great podcasts are on the way. Thanks again for listening to us here at the Pop Culture Cosmos.